The Angara is one of the largest rivers in Siberia. Its length is almost 1,800 kilometers, and it is the only river that rises in Lake Baikal. It is remarkable that thanks to the Angara Lake, Baikal has remained fresh for centuries. Every second, the river withdraws a large amount of water from the lake, preventing it from stagnating and becoming saline. Within the city of Irkutsk, the width of the Angara varies from 400 meters to 2 kilometers. The maximum depth is 7 meters. The name Angara, according to the most plausible of the existing versions, has Evenkian Buryat roots. In the language of these peoples, Anga means the mouth of an animal. And indeed, the mighty one kilometer wide source of the river resembles a huge mouth into which the waters of Lake Baikal pour. After leaving the Irkutsk region, the Angara flows through the Krasnoyarsk territory, where it joins another mighty Siberian river, the Yenisei, which then carries its waters to the Arctic Ocean. By the way, some local nationalities are of the opinion that rather the opposite is correct. Not the Angara flows into the Yenisei, but the Yenisei flows into the Angara. Along the Angara, Russian pioneers in the first half of the 17th century advanced from Yeniseisk city, then the outpost of the development of Siberia, to Lake Baikal in search of furs, silver, and free land. The Cossack captain, Yakov Pokobov, and his men reached the place where modern Irkutsk is located today, also along the Angara River. Today, he is known as the founder of Irkutsk. He came to the place to build a fort on the bank of the Angara River on behalf of the warlord of Yeniseisk city. In July 1661, he reported it to his superior by letter. In the current 169th year of July, on the sixth day against the Irkut on the Verknelinskaya side, the new fort of the ruler is erected by the servants. As you have already understood, Irkutsk takes its name from the name of the Angara tributary Irkut, opposite which Yakov Pokobov built his fort. We started our tour of the historical center of Irkutsk from its main square, Count Speransky Square. See the previous video, you can find a link to it in the description. But only now we came to the bust of the Count. So it's time to get a little closer to the one whose name is the main square of Irkutsk. Mikhail Mikhailovich Speransky served as Governor General of Siberia from March 1819 to March 1821. The ruler of Russia, Alexander I, sent Speransky to Siberia and endowed him with extraordinary powers. Mikhail Mikhailovich traveled to this distant province, both as an inspector and as the supreme chief of the region. He traveled, as the supreme command stated, to give someone a lawful judgment and also to make the most useful improvement of this remote region on the spot and to put a draft of it on paper. Speransky wrote, the further I sink to the bottom of Siberia, the more evil I find, and almost intolerable evil. The inspection revealed a simply breathtaking picture of the unchecked despotism of local authorities. The governor of Irkutsk was brought to trial, and with him some 700 minor officials. Speransky managed to do what no one before him had managed, to clean up and improve local society in a short time and on a large scale. In addition, Speransky developed a comprehensive reform package for the improvement of Siberia, which he submitted to the ruler for consideration. To make the administration more effective, he divided Siberia into eastern and western Siberia. This administrative division still exists today. After appointing his representatives in the major Siberian cities, he retired to St. Petersburg and administered Siberia from afar for the next 12 and a half years. 
Of course, Mikhail Mikhailovich Speransky, more than anyone else, has earned the right to be immortalized in the name of the main square of Irkutsk. In my opinion, he is an example of a statesman, on the one hand an uncompromising fighter against arbitrariness and corruption in the state structures, on the other hand a selfless and determined reformer for the good of the country as a whole and the individual regions in particular. We were already well acquainted with the mansion of merchant Alexander Fyodorovich Fatorov, built in 1897 in the pseudo-Russian Baroque style, which today houses the Palace of Children's and Youth Creativity. Every morning when we pushed aside the curtains, we saw this unusually elegant building at the window of our room in the historic Central Hotel, a link to a video about the hotel you will find in the description. And a little later, of course, thanks to the Irkutsk guide, Sergei, we found out who were actually the Vitorov family. The founder of the dynasty, Alexander Fedorovich Fedorov, was a very important figure at the end of the 19th century, not only in Irkutsk or Siberia, but in the Russian Empire in general. Merchant of the First Guild, gold industrialist, founder of a very successful company, Vatorov and Sons. Capital, 18 million gold rubles. By the way, the teacher's salary at that time was only 30 rubles per month. But the son of Alexander Vatorov, Nikolai, went much further than his father. I will not list all the achievements of Nikolai Vatorov in the field of Russian economy. Suffice it to say that Nikolai received the nickname Russian Morgan among his fellow entrepreneurs because of his iron grip and constant luck in business. And even in our time, Forbes magazine has recognized Nikolai Vitorov as the richest man in Tsarist Russia with a fortune of almost 60 million gold rubles, which by today's standards is almost a billion US dollars. Interestingly, Nikolai Alexandrovich is considered the progenitor, if I may say so, of modern supermarkets. To spend the time we love so much. It was he who, for the first time in Russian history, opened a whole chain of retail stores in Siberia, each of which also included a restaurant and a hotel in 13 of the largest Siberian cities. And another curious fact is that the villa in Moscow, on Spasopeskovsky Lane, which currently houses the residence of the American ambassador to Russia, known as Spaso House, was built with the money of Nikolai Vtorov in 1915. It is in neoclassical style. But the most interesting thing is that in this house was held the Ball of Satan, which Mikhail Bulgakov describes in the last part of his brilliant novel, The Master and Margarita.